All right, guys, welcome back to the World Championship Series, European Premier League season at number three. We now have our second series of the night on the way. It's going to be between Mr. Arox Titan and Nurture from Acer. That's right. This should be a good series because I'm yeah. a big fan of Titan. I always have been since his performances in 2011 when they were really strong. Um, he was representing Russia in WCG. He was starting to pick up a lot of consistent results. But then in 2012, he had a bit of a slower year, I'd say. Mm. But he's really starting to pack it in again, quite strong. He's working very hard. He's mentioned to me he's going to the gym. He's, you know, works in and practicing <clears> like 12 hours a day. He really wants it in the WCS. But another player that's kind of had a slower start to this year was Nurcio, who yep. didn't really do too well at the start of the year. He, he's played a lot of League of Legends. Uh, and, you know, he's back into StarCraft 2 now, Clark. And he's doing well again. He's, he's picking yeah. up some good results. Yeah, really working very, very hard uh, as of late. And uh, that's, that's, good. that's good for him because yeah. being a professional StarCraft player, you kind of want to be at the top of your game. And Nurcio, yeah. he's getting back to the top of his game. Yeah. This could be a season where Nurcio advances on very strongly. I think he can. Mm. I, mean, do you, do you, I mean, I'll actually ask you this question once we get into the game because right. I know we were about to jump in. Right. Uh, first map is Frost between these two guys. Mm -hmm. Nurcio has been playing some uh, very aggressive styles recently in Zerg versus Protoss. Lots of Ling heavy styles, lots of denies on that fast third base which Protoss players like to take. But Titan's a player that's been playing a bit online and stuff, but his style isn't as well known out there. He's a barcode on the European ladder. Yeah. We don't really see him too much publicly, so I'm interested to see what he can bring today. He's a, he's a weird one, is Titan. He can play some really sporadic styles. But now let's jump into game one, guys, as we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner as our Red Zerk, representing Acer as well as Poland. He is Nurcio. And up to the top right as our blue Protoss, representing Arox as well as Russia, we have Titan. All right, so what I was going to ask you is, mm. do you ever binge away on something when you shouldn't? Um, like a game, films, hmm. something like this. I, I go through phases of anime. Okay. Some phases of anime, and then... I would say I was guilty to playing some games more than I should have done. For a long time, I played World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. That was really bad, <laughs> as I played a lot of it um, and uh, neglected some things. Um, but then, yeah, just other games, just other games here and there. So, yeah, sometimes. Okay, because uh, do I, I do. Yeah. Um, the, there's different What's stages of uh, over the three or whatever years I've been doing StarCraft II. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I've had... Dota binges. Hmm. I've had TV binges uh, yeah. where I've just watched uh, back to back to back to back to back of episodes yeah. and seasons. Like whole uh, seasons. Whole like seasons back to back. Um, what, that can be fun sometimes, though. What man. was it that yeah, I watched fun. back to back? Um, Breaking Bad, Breaking I watched Bad. like a couple of seasons back to back because I was kind of late into it. Uh, and there's been a couple of others too. And I'm actually a big fan of when I watch TV. I don't like to wait the week. I like not to read just the internet and go, just go, go. when it's all finished, yeah. I just go bam no, and I finish like it really, really fast. So I have a lot of binges that, that come in th like through these different parts. And Dota 2, I had a really big one a couple of years back because I played a, you know, a game the other day and that's mm -hmm. about it for like two years. But two years ago, I played Dota 2 all the time. Like yeah. I played hundreds of games. Oh, nice. And I was playing over... I went to a peak, I reckon, about 80% of my day was Dota 2 oh, or wow. StarCraft. And for me, that's that's great. That's absolutely insane. That's, yeah. It started with one game here and then another one here. And, you know, then it was 50-50. And then the next thing I knew, it was 80%. And I was like, oh, my, what the hell is happening? Uh, and you do go through them stages. And maybe some other people do. But Nurture, I feel, would relate to that a little bit when it comes to playing League of Legends. Yeah. Bit, because that's what it was, I feel. It was a binge. He played a lot of it. And then he got bored of it because he, he had... The urge from it, you know, he got everything he wanted from it and then was like, well, oh. and I spoke to him, he says, yeah, I play maybe one game a week, but it's really boring for me now. I've, yeah. I played yeah. it a lot, I played it a ton, uh, and of course, he's back in StarCraft and looking good. That's certainly true. Dude, I haven't done the Breaking Bad thing yet. Everyone keeps telling me, watch Breaking Bad, watch Breaking Bad. I'm probably going to get a lot of tweets now saying, watch Breaking Bad, hashtag behave, watch Breaking Bad. But I haven't done it yet. Is it is it worth it, you think? Yes. Yeah? Worth it? Yeah. All right. Right. I don't know why uh, admins not speaking to these players. They're just making their own decisions up. So uh, we're going to yeah. rehost. That's fine. Uh, we can we can talk a little bit more. We can. Um, well, there was lag going on in the game, so we just a lot of lag. It. Yeah, um, we we could feel it. They could feel it. So just getting this remade here, guys. Uh, so yeah, not done Breaking Bad. What are the other series? I remember watching Prison Break. 
I didn't do Prison Break for a long time, and someone was like, watch Prison Break, like season mm. one, and then the other. And season one was really awesome. Season one was really cool. But that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. So I don't watch too much TV, to be honest with you. I just watch anime series, and that's about it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just talking to these players. Um, they don't know. The admin's actually not here, so I told them to make the games themselves. Oh, really? Mm, okay. Uh, I guess. I don't know. All right. But aside from that, guys, uh, we are just we will we'll get into this first game very soon. But whilst we're doing that, this is a perfect opportunity for people to go over to Twitter and hashtag Rocket and hashtag WCS. Predict the second place finisher in the group. And if you do, you win yourselves a Kiln Pure Optical, as seen here, exhibited by the lovely Apollo. So you can win a mouse. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, alright, so we will be getting this game underway, so uh, of course, yeah, that that's, uh, competition's always a good one. We've uh, played it for uh, for every day now, for the last few days mm -hmm. in a row. Um, if you've uh, been selected by Rocket, you should also let us know too. That would be pretty cool if you uh, had been selected. Yeah, because the past couple of days we actually haven't, we personally haven't known who's uh, been selected. But if you win, tweet at us, because uh, we would like to know, so that'd be nice. Uh, okay, so we're still waiting for these guys to get into their first game. As there are some slight delays here. But we anticipated this night going on a little bit longer than the previous ones. We've had a few shorter nights here at the WCS. Uh, a lot of fast and furious games. Uh, but this one could go on a little bit longer. You've got people like Hasuobs in the mix. Titan can also play a very prolonged game as well. Uh, and Shuttle doesn't seem as if he's going down the normal, uh, well, I wouldn't say normal, but the, the general Korean route of playing from the Korean server and just playing very aggressive. Uh, he's looking to play it out as well. So, uh, commendations to Shuttle um, as he's, he's trying to bring his A game. Yeah, he's trying to bring his A game. It will be very difficult, though, with the set of players that are in this mm. group. Um, you know, Nurcio is mentioned back on form. Titan's just always a very talented individual. It does bring performances that make you go, wow. Uh, and then, you know, some other days, it's like, what were you trying to do? Uh, and I think that's the best way to describe Titan as a player. Is, yeah. Um, he, he's, he plays the game his own way, I'd like to say. He doesn't really copy too many other player trust players. He has ideas from them. But a lot of the builds he makes are generally his own, like of what he thinks Protoss should be played. And that's one thing that makes him really unique. And it makes you do sometimes go, wow, that was really yeah. cool. And sometimes you're like, wow, that was really bad. Because sometimes it really works. Because the way that he practices is ladder, play a couple of custom games, and maybe in those games it works. But then when he brings it to the tournament scene in the streams, it just you know, flops, and yeah. that's when you have the difference in, in uh, you know, does it look great or does it not? But uh, Titan is a wild one. Nurture, though, is a winner. You know, it's a big difference between a wild, crazy Protoss player and a winner. Because last year, I think he won Dreamhack Book Arrest, which is coming up in a week, so not even a week, <laughs> tomorrow, like, it's that soon, uh, this time last year. Uh, and then, of course, he also won Home Story Cup 5. He was a winner, and he's, he's won more. Hmm. You know, back in the day, the, before Stefano really just went, I am number one. Nurture and Stefano were battling and rivaling so hard for that number one spot in Europe for a very, very long time. Yeah, they certainly were. But back on to what you were saying about Titan's style and it being his own, there's a very, very strong Russian influence on it, I want to say. You see people like Titan uh, and uh, people like Siv, who actually retired during season two, mm. um, those kinds of guys just mix in little things that are, are their own. Against Terrans, for example, going for observer speed is something that they were, you know, mixing in from time to time to keep up with medevacs. And mm. it was... You were right, it's hit, uh, their styles are like hit and miss. Either it looks brilliant and it's great, or it just looks silly. So there is that mentality to it. There is that kind of little uh, tidbit. But now, guys, the countdown is finished. We can get into our first game here on Frost. So let's jump right on in. And uh, we've already done our intros, so we can we can stay away from that for this, this first game. Okie doke. Um, okay, so... I mean, Frosted, they've actually spawned in the same locations. Just reversed. Just reversed. Yeah. So, these guys are going to be facing off on Frost. Um, and 
You know, for Nurcio, I'm curious to see what he's going to bring to the table. I think he probably will go for that, you know, a Ling style, trying to punish the third base. If you're a Protoss on this map and you don't wall off your third base appropriately, uh, then you can be hit pretty hard. But there are little places that you can use here because it's kind of choked in uh, between these two little... Uh, pieces of architecture that you can make really nice walls on this map. I've seen some really, really good ones as of late. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've played this map quite a bit, but uh, in, in this season on the ladder, I've played a few Protoss games. So I probably played, I don't know, like three games uh, as Protoss on each of the new maps, roughly. Mm. But all the other games that I've played this season, I've been playing a ton. I've been with Terran. So, yeah. um, I mean, this matchup, I am expecting. I mean, I know the matchup very well and how it plays out. The map, not as much. But with the map rotation and the, the way that the bases lay out, I can kind of expect uh, it to play a certain way. So we'll see if that uh, that happens. Yeah, I, personally, I you know I've been playing a lot of Zerg recently, so going up against Protoss on this map has been a little bit of a nightmare, <laughs> uh, especially with these spawning positions. Actually, I want to say um, as. It's, it's rare that you would see the Protoss actually take the base down to here because it can be a little bit more difficult to wall off. Uh, but the only disadvantage of this base up here is the fact that you are technically expanding kind to, you know, towards your opponent. So uh, sometimes, of course, launching attacks is great there. But also Nurcio, if he wants to punish that third really, really fast, he can do because he can launch an attack at such a close location. Mm. So that gets over there so rapidly where normally as a Protoss, you're trying to have time to get your kind of buildings in the right spots. Look at Titan's builds already. Like, wow. just sums up who he is. Yeah, exactly. It's a Nexus first, then with a gateway as the follow-up from it. Just forgetting about the forge. Uh, it, this is obviously a lot more risky than the majority of builds Protoss can choose from. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that does work in his favor here is that he has started to make a wall off with the pylon and gateway just in case something was to happen here, which he wasn't able to deal with. Um, but as we can see from Nurcio, it's, there's nothing he can do to punish this. Yeah. He hasn't taken gas. He hasn't chosen any early aggressive plays. So this is completely fine here from uh, Titan. So he does have a bit of a leg up when it comes to his build because not only does he have the advantages of going for a Nexus first and having a good economy, he also has the advantage of going for a gateway expansion because he has the gateway so early on. And the one thing that takes away from all that is the defense from the forge, the cannon, or for the earlier, earlier gateway to get a Zealot and Mothership core. Mm. So he's got kind of the best of both worlds with this build. It is greedy, but he's got the best of both worlds. He really has. Uh, he's going to try and wall off this as well. The Zerglings are poking across, but it's only four Zerglings. Not going to be able to do too much at all here uh, with these, as long as Titan does control properly. <laughs> Might actually uh, take a look at this pylon and try and force the cancel, but at least he gets in. And uh, let's see what he gets to do with this. Well, Nurcio's got two Zerklings in, hasn't he? So mm. uh, if he's able to pick up a couple of probes here, he just ruins Titan's build. And he's going to get ooh, maybe one there. It was almost one. But there's a couple of probes that aren't mining on the natural land inside the main base. So he is doing, the, you know, with what he had in this setup was only four Zerglings. Yeah. He's done okay with just those four Zerglings oh, yeah. because sometimes you wouldn't even expect anything from them. Yeah, certainly. he's uh, He's been controlling these very, very well. He hasn't lost a single one thus far. So controlling at the front and controlling at the back, it's a testament to how strong mechanically Nurcio is to actually just control those. And look at this double forge. Wow. So one gate, so a nexus into gateway, and then double forge follow-up. Both on the wall as well. Both on the wall. Both have been so scouted early on. Interesting build coming from Titan here. Going to play very uh, timing-oriented. Mm. So he could hit with a 1-1 timing. He definitely is going to hit with a 2-2 timing. But overall, just a very unique playstyle from Titan. And... I mean, this is just backing up everything that I said about him earlier on. Exactly. This is this is what he does. He plays in his own little corner of the world, and uh, you know, he he certainly does make some interesting builds. But uh, because this is Nurcio, Nurcio's played a lot of games, so he's run into a lot of weird situations mm. as well. So uh, I'm curious to see how he's actually. Uh, going to accommodate for this. Yeah, he's getting his uh, single evolution chamber, not 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 double here. So I'm uh, expecting a carapace upgrade. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think any attacking upgrade would make too much sense here. Um, the robotics facility behind this as well. Titan, uh, it's very difficult to break down Titan's build because you don't know which avenue he's going to go yeah. down. Because surely you would have expected a Twilight Council to follow this quite fast because he's got 1 1 and would like to go to 2 2. But he's thrown down a robotics facility here. But I still feel he'd have to throw down the Twilight soon. But. 
I mean, Titan, this is why people, uh, well, I don't know if people, but this is why I'm a fan of him. Uh, yeah, I love exactly. this kind of creative, different, non-robotic playstyle. Exactly. He can throw this uh, onto the table, and uh, then now Nurcio is going to have a little bit of a harder time dealing with what's going on. Uh, he's Corona boosting out the Immortal straight away. Yeah, I, I don't think it's for an all-in. Yeah. Uh, I definitely feel this is for like an immortal-based defense towards a third. Uh, with the Twilight Council coming in, that kind of shows us that he will get to 2-2 two, two soon. And he will take a third base momentarily as well. Uh, the Evolution Chamber has not been used here by Nurcio at all. He's got his layer down rather fast. So I'd expect a Hydralist Den to come down, considering mm. he's got five out of the six gases so far. And he will try to put some pressure on, I suppose. Uh, Zergling-based... If he doesn't get Roach Speed's Hydra. I've got to ask, though, with the double forge and the committal to those upgrades this quickly, yes, his units are going to be very strong, but how many is he going to have to secure a third base? Well, you don't like, need as much as you would do normally with 1-1 one, one and 2-2 two, two yeah. on the way, right? And he already has quite a few force fields. It depends on how well he hits his force fields and... No carapace upgrade is, is going to hurt that a lot. Yeah, no carapace upgrade, just melee. So Zergling style, and, and there's no... Hydroden, there's no Spire. Yeah, the Zerglings poke forwards and see this army, and uh, he's a little bit uh, curious as to what's going on. 2 2's going down well, with this as well. Well, he might be thinking it's some weird two base all in because yeah, you, know, you don't know be. what is capable of Titan, but he will throw down his third Nexus or at least attempt to shortly, I suppose. Um, but he's actually going to come from the high ground area. This is a good position to force field and do a bit of damage to the mineral line hmm. of his opponent. Yeah, it really He does is. know that the hatchery's there, so it makes sense. He throws in the Hallucinate Phoenix. He's going to throw down a pylon here and get aggressive. Uh, he, he, he definitely has plans to expand in this game, but for now, he's going to try to put some pressure on. Yeah, Zergling's trying to swing around to the oh, back wow. here, but a lot of them get caught. These force fields are pretty interesting. A lot of the armies not really doing too much, but there's the speed. Oh, wow. Whoa, and that's a big surround. And that's game over. He has to recall out. That's game over. Ugh. That's actually game over. Yeah. His force fields were looking good, and then they looked terrible. But now it's like, good luck securing a third base, Titan. Yeah, you're, you're not actually going to take a third base in, in this game. The, the Hydralis Den is down as well. The Spy's coming in to mix things up. Uh, he lost all his sentries there, even though he had 1-1. One, one. Mm. Now th this is almost game over from this. This is absolutely a disastrous position for Titan. He lost way too much there. The forges are going to get picked off. Yeah. So goodbye 2-2 two, two upgrades. Oh, and it's been such a committal for a long time. This gas could have been spent elsewhere for all that time. But but now they are going to go down. One falls, the second one will as well. The roaches are just going to stick around and make sure that that happens. Oh, actually, you know, the force fields did hold on. That force yeah. overcharge kills it off. Uh, and by the looks of it, Nurcho's just going to build Mutalist now. He's not even going to use his Hydralist then. Uh, he sees his army's comp he sees his opponent's army composition, sell it, Sentry, Immortal. Even though I say that he just built six Hydras, um, I definitely feel this is mostly going to be for Mutalist now. He's got 1,200 gas in the bank. Yeah, it's like, why not? I mean, against your opponent that has put themselves in this ba on this back foot position. It's 50 armor supply to 42, yes. But look how secure this top position is with these spine crawlers trying to get through that narrow choke point while spine crawlers are poking away at you and then the reinforcements are going to have time bought for them to get up there as well. This is difficult for Titan. Well, Titan knows he's in a pretty bad position. It looks like he may just try to attack here. He's warping in quite a few units, a warp prism on the way as well, and he may just go for it um, in, in hope of maybe I can win, but 16 Mutalisks yeah. are about to come to play. Against six Stalkers and three se uh, Sentries. Of course, he may get a few more Stalkers here, um, but aside from that, that's, uh, those are going to dissolve very quickly on the ground, I would say. Mm. Yeah, this... The, uh, <laughs> Oh, Titan was looking so good and then looking so bad again here. And this is one of the instances where you're like, all right, cool, no terrible build. And it didn't work out too well for him. But I think it, it definitely has good potential to be a, a nice build from him. But the Mutalists are going to go into the uh, main base. They're going to tear apart everything. He's going to defend with spines, hydras and lings and, and roaches. And he's going to force a base trade. Yeah, and Titan, he knows about that, but he's just having to march across the map. The Stalkers get engaged straight onto. And yes, eventually they will have plus three weapons, but I don't even think he'll get there because now these uh, Mutalisks, there's no cannons here to deal with this, uh, and the army's just going to try and plow on forwards. And then at the same time on the other side of the map, we have Titan about to take the fight here. He's got fantastic upgrades here uh, with plus two attack doing so much damage. But the amount of Mutalisks that are in the sky, and they can always come back to defend, remember? Mm, yeah, they could. Uh, that Colossus ended up dying off as well, so 
That's a lot of uh, space control that Nurtio uh, has just denied from his opponent. The expansion will end up falling, and the Mutalisks do get forced back thanks to those Stalkers, but he lost 32 workers. Yeah, he's lost all his income, basically. He's hardly got any income, so he can't really replenish any Stalkers he was to lose. So Nurtio needs to bring all the... Oh, he actually doesn't want to lose loose Mutalisks like that. He loses one or two there. Mm. So his count's at 15. It's about to be 19. And it should be enough to pick off the anti-air, right? Yeah, the drones come along as well, and that's going to help out even more with the Zerglings flooding in. Once yeah. all of these Stalkers die off, then it's going to be bye-bye Immortals and bye-bye Zealots. He gets the Spire, but it's a little too late. Yeah, uh, there is uh, the jump out there from Titan, who's trying to play with 26 pros. But, you know, his opponent is hurting too. Yeah. Uh, Army supplies 52 to 40 right now. The spine crawlers just going to reposition themselves down to the south and protect what is considerably considered to be probably the most uh, valuable base mm. here for Nurtio. A brand new, fresh one to just mine away at from. Yeah, this game's a little bit closer than it should have been, I think, here for Nurtio. Uh, but still, he's in uh, quite a commanding position, I'd say. Um, the Mutalis and Zergling is just going to flood on forwards. If they can break down that wall and get in, then great. Uh, but the Mutalis is going to try and draw a bit of this army away. Well, any Stalker he picks off here is going to be very difficult to replenish. Likewise, yeah. Mutalis are going to be hard to replenish too, though, remember? Yeah, that's certainly true. But still, there's just now. not enough. Not enough Stalkers. Yeah, there's six out right now against the 30 Mutalis that still reign in the skies. So, uh, they're going to die off. And uh, it didn't, you know, he does have the Mothership Core, but does it have any energy to actually do any Photon Overcharge? It, no, it does. does. Oh, it does. Yeah, but... I mean, nah, it's still not going to be enough. Yeah, uh, an interesting game here from Titan. He was about to lose uh, pretty much everything here. Behind this is just more and more Zerglings coming in. GG. Nurture takes map number one. A bizarre game of day, uh, day of games thus Wank far. A really, really wonky game there. Yeah. Right? Really. Uh, but you summed it up very nicely at the beginning. That's kind of what we see from Titan. Maybe he'll fall back onto a normal build in game two. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll see... Uh, you know, either him be completely adamant with that build or mm. have something tailored to to the second game, which is something we're not too used to seeing. Mm. Yeah. All right. Interesting. I'd, I'd like to see what happens in the, in the next map, though. Uh, I don't know what if he does something weird again, if he does the same. Hmm. Well, I don't know. If he does something, if he did, if he did the same build, um then I guess all he has to do is position himself just a little bit better if he's going to push out like that. Because he expended a lot of force fields. Uh, and actually, you know, the map being Yonsu, the third base, if he wants to go down the same route, is better for that kind of build, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult to traverse the entirety of the map with that smaller unit force uh, in comparison to the spawning positions on that previous map. But um, if he can get into position just above the third on the cliff. This could be uh, a map where th Titan brings that style back. All right, well, let's find out if he can do something along those lines here. Uh, would be interesting to see a, a Titan victory here. I would quite like to see it, actually. Mm. Uh, but we'll see if he can take on the likes of Nurtio, who is looking very good. He seems to have a quite a decent understanding of how to play this matchup in recent times. He's getting the tech switches all down right. He's forcing his opponent one direction, then going the other. And he seems to be playing, once again, on top form. And let's see if he can continue that here. Coming from Challenger League into Premier League. And can he move on to the round of 16 where he was in Season 1? Season 2, not so much down in Challenger League. But this could be a, a season where we see Nurcio climb back to former glory. Yep, it certainly could be. I, I mean, after seeing the past performances of him doing well uh, in other tournaments, he could certainly at least make the round of 8 here. He has the potential for that. But now we can jump into game at number 2. It's funny because, you know, Hasu and uh, Titan, as well as maybe even Shuttle, if he brings uh, back some uh, good performances, all have the potential to move on far. But now, spawning up to the top right as our Red Zerg. Currently one game up, he is Ace and Nurcio. And down to the bottom left-hand corner as our Blue Protoss, he is Rox Titan. Ah... Uh. Pile on down there again. I wonder if he opens up the same build. I kind of like it. It is very risky, but Nurcio is a player that would be like, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm going to beat him. Yep. But uh, we'll see if that's the case, because this is an early scout coming out from Titan, looking for that very thing. And uh, if he was to go Nexus and then was to see something very early on, I'm quite sure he'd start to make a wall off with a forge. Uh, instead of trying to go for his gateway play. So yeah. this is kind of smart from him. Uh, on this map, this two-player map, you can just come in, just see. 
And uh, he's going to be like, all right, so it looks like he may be trying to go for a regular play, which means I can go for my regular play too. Yeah, he's having a look around and seeing what needs to be seen. Um, but for now, no, it's show. Just going to probably end up throwing that spawning pool down. There we go. Uh, block, though, there <laughs> from Titan. Cheeky little man does get that. And uh, that forces that drone to lose a little bit of mining time, but not too much in the end. I did have a tweet that uh, that came in saying I won yesterday's Rocket competition. Yay! So congratulations at uh, Gillyweed SC2. Oh, Gillyweed. Yeah. Gillyweed won. She does some cool content. She does uh, fan art content, I believe, on YouTube. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. I was about to say you, sir, but then it wouldn't have been apt. <laughs> you, madam. You, madam. There you go. So congratulations on winning your rock, at uh, your rock at Mouse. And if you guys want to join the competition as well, just like Gillyweed did, then all you need to do is go down to Twitter and make sure to hashtag WCS, like you should be doing anyway if you're talking about WCS. Yeah, God. And then include a hashtag Rocket along with it, which is the WCS new sponsor here in Europe. And then just uh, predict who you think is going to advance in second place. Not first, not who wins, mm -hmm. but who wins the final match of the evening, which results in the second place finisher. It certainly does. And uh, it could be any of these guys, as we still have everyone in the running for those spots. So Titan now, what is he up to? He threw down the forge. He's got that photon cannon going down. He did a really good job of denying his opponent's natural, actually, uh, with that probe. Kept the drone dancing. Uh, but that third has not been stopped as Nurchio's. He's playing his own game for a little bit. Yeah, different setup from Titan. Look, it's uh, not mm. double forge. It's not uh, you know the best of both worlds with the Nexus and Gateway here. It's just a regular style of opening. Um, I don't know what this could mean for him. Uh, there's two angles that the, a lot of players go down after trying to open up like this. Is for a regular Stargate play into a fast third, or we see a lot of immortal all-ins, which Titan is very well known for doing. He yeah. does like these type of plays. He is about to escape with a with a probe, though. And uh, that will, you know, scout the third base out and also offer potential for pylons hidden around him with plus one starting. Mm. Titan. Titan. And Chrono Boost in it, too. Wow. Okay, so he really wants that out quickly here. Uh, the Cybernet is caught. I guess, you know, if he starts his uh, warp gate tech, and then maybe sends a few uh, Chrono Boosts into the Warp Gate tech as well. He can start timing those out to hit exactly together. Uh, but it, it's 160 seconds on a, both. So uh, we'll have to spend the Chrono Boost on the Warp Gate. Yeah, this is interesting that he's Chrono Boosting into this plus one attack because it may be ready before Warp Gate's ready. That means does he try to go for a 1-1 one, one attack? Mm. With a robotics facility coming in, it seems like he's going to not go for a gateway style attack. But what he's doing is rushing out his plus one attack and we'll follow this up with a second upgrade which will clearly be plus one armor. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like it is going to be the Immortal All-In behind this but with 1-1 one, one upgrades and still decently timed. It's as if it's a very, very similar build to last, yeah. but with just the one forge and trying to compensate that with, you know, those extra Chrono Boosts. So this could throw Nurture off. He could just be like, well, mm. yeah, uh, yeah, but at the same time, if he just spots that Robo Silty or anything about that, then he's going to be okay. Well, pro production has stopped here, Kolaris. We may see actually a Warp Prism too. Um, hmm. that, that being said, he's, he's made so many zealots. He's, he's made zealots from the gateways, and he's got three zealots charging towards this uh, hatchery, uh, as well as the mothership core making its way across. And there is the warp prism on its way. And look at this plus one attack finishing up as the three zealots arrive. Beautiful style wow. here from Titan. And this is incredibly fast. And all of a sudden, Nurture's like, oh, wow, what? Yeah, those three Zealots are going to be able to hold their own a hell of a lot longer than they normally would have been able to without that, uh, without that plus one. But now just positioning themselves, it doesn't even matter too much uh, as they're not in the big best of choke points, but they, they got a pretty good trade-off there for themselves. Yeah, got quite a few kills there. Picked off the Queen, which means the Mothership Core can uh, do some damage. Unfortunately, the pylon behind it didn't work because now Warp Gate's ready, mm. and probably in Titan's plan would have been, all right, now his time to warp in three more Zealots with plus one attack. And that would have been nice. But we do have the Warp Prism headed towards the main base. It's gone scouted so far. He does not have a sentry in it at the moment, but he probably will throw it in, and it's just outside the Overlord range, vision range. Oh, he's come Zealots. Oh, it's just going to be Zealots here. 
And uh, only zealots. Okay, yeah. he's not going to try and force field the ramp. But the roaches are already positioning themselves here. I don't know how well this is going to work for Titan because uh, yeah. these roaches are going to shut this down. Mothership core on the third base as well. Going to pick off a couple of drones behind this. Immortals have begun and plus one armor as well. And Titan's looking to try to do some damage to slow his opponent down. And by the looks of it, we'll follow this up with an immortal attack. And it really comes down to how much damage Titan can do. He's taken so much on the mothership core. He's lost the mothership core. Aww. And that is a vital part of this all in to be able to use the double time warp. Yeah, it really is. Is those Zerglings and Roaches are going to have a much easier time of dealing with that. And not only that, but his harassment tools have just not worked out that well. He's tried to get yeah. in to the main. And now, because of all of these uh, accommodation he's made into the build, this Immortal Push is going to hit slower, far slower. He's trying to get the surround on the Queen there. And I don't think he'll go for the Immortal Push anymore because it'll hit slower and it's not working too well. Yeah, so what he can rocks. try to do is just keep harassing with the Warp Prism because there's only Queens at the moment and just take a third base. With a third base being put down, it's going to be very difficult for Nurcho to go over the other side of the map to harass it. Because if he does that, then the Warp Prism can drop three Zealots and can also warp in six more any time because mm. of the six gateways. So it makes more sense here for Titan 2 grab an expansion. But Nurcio, sneaky, sneaky Nurcio, gets the Overlord creep spread on the third base, denying the third Nexus from coming down. Yeah, and now this gives Nurcio the heads up that his opponent does want this base. So once he's felt dealt with this, and he's going to kill that Warp Prism if he actually stuck around. Uh, but at the same time, the Zealots did kill off the queens in time to be able to save that warp and that's <laughs> the meticulous timing there by him he could have easily lost that yeah very nice uh, there by uh, titan to be able to pick off double queens on that third base harass it a little bit more and uh, behind this take his third base a, a vital structure missing from his uh, play is the twilight council if he was going to play longer but he's about to make his movement out he's got a ton of sentries now he's warped in a lot of sentries a lot of fresh ones as well they're mm. all at 60 energy and he's about to make his way across with more Zealots being warped in. Is Nurture ready to defend this attack? I didn't think it was going to come, and I didn't think Nurture was either. And no. all of a sudden, here it is. Yeah, and again, this position is far easier to force field off than the previous one uh, when he was going for this kind of assault here. So force fields will go down a little bit preemptively here to try and catch some of this out of position. Throws down a lot of force fields, but some Zerglings do start connecting with those sentries. Great we'll start force fields. Them and trying to get past this. But the Immortals, they're going to stay alive for a long time here, so he has to evacuate this base. Yeah, this is a very good attack here oh. from, uh, from uh, Titan. Oh, and even more force fields litter down there. The Roaches can still fire out a lot of this, but they're not firing at the Immortals. The, the Zealots are tanking the damage, and this base could just easily die right now. Yeah, easily, easily die. And all he needs to do is keep on warping the units. A great position with the Hallucinated Phoenix to scout if he was going to get flanked as he attacked in here, and he really got the best position possible. And as long as he continues to warp in units, so with three immortals still alive, they will deal damage. Simple. At 14 kills, 15 kills, and 13 kills, those three immortals paying for themselves. They're waiting. Good Titan ties up the series one to one. Nurcio got caught with his pants down. Yeah, great build there. And he definitely had so much to offer with this style and strategy. Different approaches. It looked like it was three zealots first. Then it could have been six if the gateway or well, pylon had got down. The gateways mm. could have come in. Then there was the potential for a sentry on the ramp. Warpens in the main. Could have taken the third base maybe. But as of course the initial plan is most expected was the immortal attack. Well done. Good play. All right. Well, now all we have to do is wait for this third game. I'm very interested to see who is actually going to make it out of this because it could go either way if Titan is willing to go for something as aggressive again. Uh, Nurcio, though, he's, he's held this off a lot. It, he just didn't expect it. So yeah. if, if he just keeps his scouting a little bit more meticulous into those later stages of yeah. that third base going down then uh, he could be okay. Yeah, it's always nice to see something coming. But uh, another problem that Nurtio had to encounter in that game was his queens kept getting picked off. He lost one in the main base, another one on the natural, and then two on the third base. That's four queens he lost, I think. Three or four queens in that game that he got, you know, lost. That's a lot. A lot of injects he's not hitting. That's creeps, but he's not having these things. And the harassment from Titan, as well as Nurtio not exactly knowing 100% what was coming, Seem to be going a long favor for Titan to pick up that game. And now we lead ourselves over to Willwind for the final map between these two. And we're back onto old school maps here as Willwind will with that final one. So um, these guys are going to know the map well. Titan, mm, does he go a great? I think he goes third base on Willwind. You do? Yeah. I think, I think he goes third base. If he went for like just a two base push again, mm. Uh, one, I don't think it's as good on Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. And two, um, pff, it's just going to be too predictable, right? 
Some may say. Some may say. Depends on the execution on how well that's that true. it's, uh, that's true. You know, put down there by Titan. Uh, one thing that I, I would lean towards a more normal game from uh, Titan and maybe some spin-off timing after a third has been taken. Uh, because Nurture is very good at defending most type of usual openings. Like in that game there, he defended against three Zealots with plus one attack and killing off the pylon very well. So any early attacks, Nurture's usually on top of it. He knows where the pylons and probes are most likely going to be. This is Whirlwind. He's going to figure that out as well, depending on the locations of where they both spawn. So I would favor Titan to play a little bit of a longer game than we saw in game number one and game number two. All right. Well, we're loading up onto Whirlwind here for this final map in this best of three. The winner will advance on to play against Hasu Obs for that first round of 16 spots. And the loser will fall down to that lower position to f face against Shuttle to see who goes down to Challenger League. So, again, nobody wants to go down to Challenger League. A lot of these guys have been in there, Nurture. In yeah. fact, all of them, I think, have been in Challenger League at one point or another. That's right. So, uh, tough stuff. Yeah, every single one of these players in Challenger League at least once. And, uh, but they are all in Premier League now. And two players today have the chance to go to the round of 16 where they would fight to remain in Premier League if they were to mm. make it way through the round of 16. And of course, would get the chance to come to Cologne, Germany to play live face-to-face -face with your opponents, depending on which one that will be, which opponent you will face, which will depend on the group selection, which will happen next week. Yep. Group selection. I always do like the group selection, oh, seeing yeah. who's playing who. Yeah, and this fun. one's going to be a good one because there's a lot <laughs> of good names, but there's also a lot of unknown players that are looking to make a major name for themselves. And we could have a classic upset in the round of 16 by some names like Starbucks been playing well, Targa's playing well, Showtime would be having German support behind him as well here. Yeah. So uh, anything possible here in the World Championship Series as we continue not too far away from finishing the round of 32 now. Not That's far at all. True. And uh, currently, we set a really nice race balance, actually moving into the round of 16. As you said before, yeah. four Protoss, three Terrans, and three Zergs. Uh, and the next ensuing groups can give us still even more of that balance uh, if, uh, if they play the cards right. Or we could just see more Protoss. <laughs> we could see more Protoss, as uh, they have taken the lead. It's four Protoss, three Terran, and three Zerg that have made their way into the round of 16 so far. And there's a lot of strong ones coming up as well. You've got people like Stardust, people MC. like MC coming up as well. So That's right. strong stuff. All right, let's jump into the next game. As these guys are 1-1 one, one apiece, spawning up to the top right-hand corner, our red Zerg representing Poland and Acer. He is Nurcio. And down to the bottom left-hand corner, uh, blue Protoss representing Russia and Rocks. He is Titan. 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 Let's see if he can live up to his name. So he puts a gate uh, pylon inside his main base here. Uh, this could be for the Nexus first again. Yeah. And then the gateway. That's what he uh, attempted to do around. It could be for the double forge play again. He may try to go back to what he wanted to do in game number one here with double forge into uh, very fast upgrades for a bit of a poke but mostly for that third uh, Nexus. Would be nice. It certainly would be. It certainly would. I got a lot of tweets telling me to watch Breaking Bad. So I will watch Breaking Bad. I did get curious at one particular scene in the, in the series uh, and actually look, had to look it up because everyone was telling me to look it up. It was a, it was a death scene. Uh, I wonder if people can remember which one I'm talking about. Uh, Is it something to do with the bathtub? Uh, it's, it, was, it was a bomb. It was a bomb. Oh, there's a lot of bombs in Breaking Bad. Is there a lot of bombs in Breaking Bad? There's a lot of bombs. Oh, okay. There's a lot of bombs in Breaking Bad. But some guy is basically like, he walked out and you couldn't see one side of his face and then you could see the other side of his face. And then, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But that was that was cool, man. That it was is cool. Worth watching. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. I mean, Breaking Bad. You haven't. I mean, not Breaking Bad. So you've you've never watched Prison Break either. No, I did. I did watch Prison okay, Break. Okay, you did watch yeah, Prison yeah. Break. That was cool. uh, yeah, that was all right. Breaking Bad, I'd recommend. Suits, I'd recommend. People keep saying Suits as well. Um, what else would I recommend that I've watched recently? Just focus on those. There's a lot to watch already. Focus on those ones. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll stay away from anime for a little bit. And Although, there are some Attack on Titan episodes that are coming out soon. Well, just one. So, I have to watch that as well. Anyway. Uh, Nurtio is here planning an Attack on Titan today. <laughs> it's a new episode come out. Number episode number 18. Nurtio. Coming out today. Kolaris, is that the episode that you've been waiting to watch? Uh... I guess I'll just <laughs> for the sake of it. No, but Nurtio, yeah, he's a member of the Survey Corps here, Survey Ops. So he's gonna launch that attack on Titan and uh, try and bring him down. But 
Titan, he's a friendly fellow. He's a friendly Titan. Apart from when you play friendly games. Titans in your uh, anime Attack on Titan. Uh, there's got to be there's got to be one with a soft heart. You know, it, the, yeah, there kind of is, but that's a spoiler in itself. So we've just ruined. Her. Oh, <laughs> the there reason. is one with a soft. <laughs> I haven't even watched the series, and I know what's going uh -oh. on. Uh oh, uh oh. I already know that. I'm not even going to watch it. I spoiled it for myself. Yeah, it's ruined. That's the whole thing. That's oh, it. Oh God. So let me just guess. <laughs> There was this there was this one guy that was killing and eating everyone and then all of a sudden we all knew that he had a heart of gold. Wait, no. <laughs> just like, oh I'm just gonna eat you all, but then I actually love you. No. <laughs> he was a happy ending. Can the attack and titan finish after season one? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 still going on and there's the there's the anime like the drawn uh, the manga even and I'm really tempted to read it the, the manga Oh, I you, okay the what the what the what I thought you said mandarin mandarin no no like, what <laughs> <laughs> no but it's still being uh, drawn and written and stuff so I've been tempted to read it but I, I'd rather not I'd rather just watch the episodes okay it's good so, looking at Titan's build here, he's uh, just gone for this gateway expand with uh, three gateways in a wall here, with the probe mm -hmm. just going off towards the north, as uh, he does know where uh, Nurture has spawned. I wonder if that Obser Overlord actually spotted that uh, probe actually moving out. Yeah, he definitely did. Yeah, so definitely did. Zergling he's alone. Already, he's going to build a spine crawl on his third base. He already knows. And, yeah. uh, building a couple of Zerglings already. He knows that the, the likelihood of a bit of pressure coming towards third is... Extremely likely here. Oh, look at this low zergling. It yeah. spots it instantly. Yeah. So I wonder if we can get the uh, the pylon before it finishes. The zerglings will pop out from the third. This is a tough spot for Titan. Or at least he'll get the probe. Oh, look at this. Another pylon. Wow, mega aggressive. But this one's not going to get up. No way. Uh, there are zealots coming along to reinforce it, but bye bye pylon. You didn't cancel that. Sixteen did he? zerglings are on the way, by the way. Yeah, that's quite a lot to do with this. And the other pylon's about to be. Oh no, he's going to be saved. Yeah, the zealots do warp in and will push this uh, back for now. So he still can start warping in, but again, a lot of zerglings in production. I think that with the production that Nurture has now, Titan has to abandon this. Yeah, and it's just time to build probes, man. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is he's lost the mothership core. It's 100% oh. time to build probes. Yeah, and, definitely. And uh, take some gases, bro. And uh, he's not doing it just yet. He's warping in more zealots. This is not going to work here. Nurtio. Yeah, there's a spine crawler <laughs> and a queen with a transfuse and more zerglings on the way. Even though when zealots get to a critical amount, they're very, really, really good. Very good. It's just the point that the, there's another pylon cancelled. There's another probot to try and get this down, but there's more and more zerglings coming. Um, Nurtio has got the roach one coming down because he knows that his opponent is dedicating th to this for some reason. But there is a backup plan now activated. The Stargate's on the way, and he should be taking gas. No, he doesn't need to take gas. Sorry, he's got 500 gas in the bank. Mm. Uh, but the Stargate's on, on the way. But he shouldn't lose to these Zealots, even though there's a lot of them. Yeah, they, they, that's the one thing that uh, Titan has going in his favor. The fact that there were so many so clumped up, they are going to get an effective trade-off. Whilst that Spine Crawler's trying to burrow, actually, you know, he pushes on through because he kind of reached that critical mass. But now with the Spine down and reinforcing Zerglings with those Queens, with the Roaches in production as well, this should get pushed away. Nice Transfuse. Yeah, double Transfuse available on that single Queen. And with 24 Lings and five more Roaches, he's not going to lose this. He Transfuses the Spine Crawler. Titan spends more and more money on trying to break this third base, but N Nurture's micro has been pretty good in this game until that one second where he loses one queen, but with Roaches out now, this is actually done and dusted. This is over. Yeah, it certainly is. He doesn't want to lose the queen. Ah, run away! One hit away from dying there. I'm just going to micro it just a little heart out, and that Zealot cannot catch up. Tries to swipe away at a drone, but that gets denied oh, as well. Oh, the Mothership Call. Oh, you biatch. Where is it? Just killed the queen. Oh! Oh, well, okay. It's, uh, yeah. Killed off. And, uh, well, these Zerglings gonna kill off this pylon as well. So, a cheeky little move there by Titan. He has to get out, though, so he doesn't lose his mothership core. Yeah, he really didn't do that much, though. He, he's equalized up the economy because, obviously, there was a lot of units being built there while he was probing behind. But mm. with losing all these pylons, a little bit supply blocked. <clears throat> Nurtio knows that there's no pylons on the map anymore, so he knows he doesn't need to worry about anything counterattacking him. But what we're going to see from Titan most likely, even though his sentry count's very, very high, is a third base being taken, but I'm a little bit worried that he may try to attack from this position. But if he tries to attack from this position with plus one melee on the way, these Zerglings are going to have a heyday against the sentry count. Yeah. They're, they really they're going to go crazy. And here comes extra gateways coming in. Titan looks like he's going to build a couple of void rays, then go for a follow-up attack. But I really don't... Well, one thing that hasn't been researched is Zergling speed. Hmm. 
And that's actually kind of bad, considering he's got plus one melee attack on the way. Yeah, certainly so. This uh, could come back to bite him here. Uh, the oh, Hydra uh, yeah. starts. It gives Titan a bit of a bit of an upper hand in this. Yeah. Um, and you know, nurture, for Nurture, you know, this is very visible. He sees <laughs> that his Zerglings are moving. They're slow. So uh, I guess he just wants to go straight up to Hydra and get a lot of those out. But it makes the Zerglings a lot less potent. It's it's just simply a mistake. It's just that that simple. It's mm. not something that he's skipping up to get more of something else. It's just he hasn't got it. Uh, and that's gonna make this really nice. It's like time warp's always active, basically, with Zerglings this slow. Yeah. Well, that being said, he's you know, banking up that gas here, and uh, the roaches are moving out up to the north, uh, just to try and get away from the damage that these Void Rays are putting out. That's a lot of sentries. Uh, and if he had Zergling speed, as you see, he could have wrapped around this in the middle of the map, and it would have been very hard for Titan to kind of hold off. But now, this army has got into a pretty nice spot for Titan. Yep, he's going to swing around the right-hand side here. Hydralis are on the way, but uh, supply counts are kind of close. With Titan and a bit of a lead in the army supply, he has a bit of a stronger army. Ooh. Drones are being pulled off, but here comes Zerglings from behind. Two walls of force field, super important, and does land a one down with a few holes in it. All he has to do is seal off everything at the back here as well, but Nurcio is in a little bit of trouble. The Hydralisks aren't really coming out at the right time here. He's got a few down. He's trying to focus down these Void Rays. The Mothership Core does die off as well, but the force field are doing really well here for Titan. 12 Hydras on the way. Can they be enough? I don't know. These if... Queens running away, they actually need to just transfuse and fight. I'm sorry, Gills, you're going to die, but... You have, to, you have to fight. Yeah, you certainly do. Force fields on the ramp. Force fields on both ramps, in fact, here. is just going to keep uh, Nurture out of this spot for a long time. The drones, once again, trying to evacuate out. Oh, they're actually going for the fight here. Trying to tank for these Hydras. They need to bring down that Void Ray if they can. Then maybe they can deal with the ground force. Looks like uh, this is uh, ah. rather close, but Titan should be able to do this, I think. Yeah. We're getting the Zealous at the front here. The, the Void Ray is still alive. Oh, the Void Ray needs to die. It needs to die here for Nurcio to try and hold this off. But at the same time, that guy. Oh, oh dear me. Getting up that ramp now. That's bad. That's bad for the Zerg. Pulls all the drones off the line again here. This Void Ray is still not dead. The, Vo the Hy Hydralisks. There's only four of them left at this location. And there we go. That Void Ray does end up dying. He could just throw a pile uh, force field on the ramp, though. Five roaches, six roaches, two queens are on the way, too. More and more units are being warped in here by Titan as four stalkers do appear down to the south, but unfortunately Nurture's used a lot of his drones, a lot of his economy to help defend. And yeah. Titan's gone untouched. He can force field the ramp. He can split up these units, which he should do. Oh, oh sentry okay, with the energy dies, and now that... Whoa, one sentry has 12 kills? Holy moly. King sentry, uh, and that dies off in the end, so... Poor King Sentry has the burial. Yeah, but look at how many units reinforcements that Nur uh, Titan has. He's, yeah. just got, he's just got all his probes mining while Nurture's lost all his drones. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Titan's turned this series around so well with his aggression, and Nurture has not reacted properly to it. Well, plus one melee attack was definitely to try to kill a third base. And Congrats. Because it's a, an aggressive upgrade to deal with uh, Titan trying to take a third base, which is usually what happens a lot with uh, Protoss players who fail or don't get the damage they wanted in the early stages. And then without Zergling speed, which made the Zerglings not as useful, and then with plus one melee tap being on the Zerglings and Carapace not being on everything, there's just a little thing, small little adjustments, which probably would have helped out Nurture a little bit more so than what we saw in that game. But Titan's on the edges through, and Titan's the one that makes it to the winner's match. Certainly so. So that guarantees us a pro toss in the round of 16. 5 3 3 now. Yeah, 5 3 3. Uh, might even be a second one if Hasuops is able to battle it on through or Titan battles it on through uh, that lower bracket. So that means uh, we have our set games for the next two series. Yep, that's right. So uh, we'll be going into those very shortly. I'm quite looking forward to them. Which one are you looking forward to the most, though? Mm, the PvP, I yeah. think. Hasuobs and Titan. Uh, Hasuobs has really good PvP, as we've seen a lot of times in the German scene. He won his previous EPS mm -hmm. title off the back of Protoss versus Protoss as well. Uh, and then Titan, he brings some he brings some cool things to PvP. I have to agree. I'm excited for the PvP winners match, and then we'll see how Shuttle versus Nurcio plans out because I think Nurcio should be looking to sweep that game but should I put up a fight against Hasdrobs can he do it against Nurcio later on but of course our first game that we'll be going into is that PvP all right guys so join us after the break when we shall see who advances onto the round of 16 will it be Hasdrobs or will it be Titan 